Wow. Hello, everyone. Those of you who are already here, time is it? Still a minute. <clears throat> Okay, so I've got some people with me already. I hope you've all managed to um, get the image from the British Museum website. You just search on um, collection on the website and then you find the, um, um, you just get on the website and then you search Socrates on the search bar. I sent you the link if you're on the mailing list. If you're not on the mailing list, comment and I will add you to it. Uh, I'll supply you with the link um, and yeah we're going to start drawing very shortly. We've got a two hour session and we've just got one image from the British Museum and it's one of the really important heads um, that's in room 22 of the British Museum which is obviously normally open and would usually be open still now because it's uh, it opens late on a Friday um, but obviously given the current circumstances um, it's not um, not open, but we're going to be able to go there. Jonathan Bowen's here. Good to see you, John. Remember room 22? <laughs> of course you do. Um, really good. Good. So we're going to carry on drawing. And I've got the image up here on the iPad here. So I'm going to be drawing from that and you're going to be drawing it drawing it um, from the image at home. Um, and if you've got it separately from the uh, from the YouTube video, then you can draw, um, you know, you can you can have the video up at the same time. If not, you can um, have the video playing while you have the image and you can save the image and then just have that up. OK, so I'm going to get started very shortly. And I think I'll just do give a brief introduction about the sort of technique that we're going to be using. Um, so I'm really in favour of 15th and 16th century Italian drawings, as most of you uh, know. And um, Andrea del Verrocchio is, um, I think, one of the most important drafts, draftsmen of that period. He was born in uh, 1435 and he died in 1488. And the reason I think he's so important, very instrumental in bringing about how, um, bringing about really pivotal advancement in draftsmanship because he integrates the principles of sculpture into drawing um, because he was learning from Donatello and um, oh Danny good to hear that's amazing I'm so happy that you're with us Danny yeah so the Renaissance workshop continues and I'm delighted that I um, think Verrocchio is so important because he uses the principles of uh, sculpture. So the ideas of actually communicating and rendering a sense of three-dimensional form with a two-dimensional medium. And he does that with the inf who works closely in relation to Lorenzo Ghiberti, who's one of the most remarkable um, and influential, monumentally influential masters of the Italian Renaissance, okay, and key in the development of Florentine art, very, very influential on everybody, because everybody saw his artworks because they were in public and the gates of the baptistry. Um, and so what Verrocchio does is he integrates these ideas of um, rendering three-dimensional form and um, uses that to give a real sense of volume and mass and and, and tone on, on on the page. And he draws with mediums that were very, very popularly, that were much in very popular use in the period in the in the late 15th century. And he just does miraculous artworks with them. So I'm going to show you some. This is a drawing that they have in the British Museum. Okay, it's on the front cover of this book. Okay, so I'd advise you to go into the um, the uh, museum the museum collection online and access this drawing. And if you email them, they can send you a high resolution image as well. And um, so we've got a few more of you checking in. And basically what we're going to do today is actually apply and understand. Uh, 
connection's gone a bit. Sorry about that. That looked like the connection had gone a bit funny. But anyway, um, so the principles of design in this drawing, we're going to come to understand these a bit better, and then we're going to apply them to drawing the Socrates that we've all got up on uh, a separate screen or on the same screen or whatever. Okay, so we're going to start off by just looking at how he's got a sense of the form there. Okay, so very loose lines to start with, and he generally plots the forms within the head with these very kind of general shapes. So he starts off with, well, we can see actually, if we turn the page, we've got the preliminary, a, a more preliminary drawing, not really the preliminary drawing for that study, but a, um, another drawing which really illustrates the process. Okay, so it starts off establishing a sense of the inclination of the head in a general shape and then works into the form by giving a, uh, a clear indication of where the eye sockets are and the ridge of the nose and the line of the mouth and how these are all connected and related to one another. Okay, when I've got better facilities, I'm going to make sure that we can really closely analyze drawings and maybe do some work from old master drawings. Okay, but I'm going to leave that here for now and I'm going to start demonstrating um, a simple way to start off drawing the head. Okay, and we've got this wonderful image from room 22 in the British Museum. All right, feel free to comment or message me while, um, while this uh, video is up and um, yeah, just interact. And then at some point we'll hopefully be able to um, do some look at each other's drawings. Okay, and hopefully soon we'll be able to work with some life models. Okay, so really want to make this a project that can interact with people and be useful to as many people as possible in this period of time. Okay, want this to be really productive and um, want it to be positive for as many of you. Okay, so if you think somebody might benefit um, from having some respite, um, some positivity and uh, some creative stimulation, some artistic sort of historical stuff to keep them going, then, um, you know, this is open to everybody, okay? So, <clears throat> oh, look, I'll start off with a drawing that I made of the Socrates in the actual museum. Okay, I think I shared it on the Instagram earlier to um, give you a sense of what we're doing. So this is a sample of a drawing which isn't completely finished, I suppose. No drawing is ever completely finished. Um, but it's at a stage where you can, you know, do maybe more with it. Okay, so this is a sketch. Oh, Sorry, this is a sketchbook drawing I made of Socrates in the British Museum a couple of years ago, just in pencil. Okay, very, very light, subtle drawing, and that's the sort of technique and process I'm going to use. And um, if I'd have done it in charcoal, it might have looked like more like the Verrocchio. <laughs> I doubt it, but you know, one can one can aspire. Um, so I'm going to try and do this so that everyone can see while I'm drawing. And um, and uh, I'm going to select my materials. I'm going to use pencil again, as in my previous one. Oh, I don't know if the connection's working so well. I'm trying. I'm going to do my best and try and um, not disrupt it as as causes little. Yeah, trying to kind of make sure that this video runs as smoothly as possible. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah, I think I'm going to take a four B pencil, and you can see the image, and I hopefully you'll be able to see me draw as well if I set this up properly. <clears throat> okay. Forgive me, it's very ad hoc. <clears throat> and I'm not prepared. Well, sort of prepared. Prepared in some ways. Ugh, put the light on me a bit more. Oh. Okay, Cywall. Oh, wow, Cy. Oh, that's amazing, Cy. <clears throat> Size the man. It really is, actually. Okay, so we're looking at the image now. <coughs> We've got Socrates, and we're just more than anything. So we're not looking at the outline or any of the details. We're trying to establish, first and foremost, a sense of the position of the head. And as you can see on the Socrates, his, the linear elbow running down the centre of the head is very um, 
vertical, it's almost perfectly vertical. And we want to establish just a sense of the shape of the head at the beginning, okay? So the one thing that we can do to start is just, as Verrocchio did, draw in just not a not an, an oval don't draw a generic form this is really boring and it's not actually you don't actually empathize with what you're drawing if you do it like that so actually draw a specific form not a generic form draw a specific form which is purely observational okay so you're really looking at that shape but you're drawing it in the most simple way as possible okay with a kind of a couple of impressions and this is the way I generally approach this okay it's very loose and it is approximate it doesn't have to be exact it's very simplified okay so the first marks I'm going to make are these just really looking at the structure of the head okay and down to the base of the beard we can't see the chin but here just in a few marks, I've drawn a very loose shape, okay, very faintly. So it's sort of, it almost looks like I've drawn outline. I'm really sorry if you can't see that so well. But it's very quite faintly drawn and loose. But anyway, hopefully, hopefully that's visible. Cool, we've got 10 people already. That's quite nice. A nice little, you know, sometimes the class has got, you know, that number of people in. So it's just like a real class, life drawing class. But on a Friday at the British Museum looking at the British Museum collection. Okay, so straight away, I've established um, a key, a, a kind of a sense of the position of the head and the action of the head with some very light lines. So now, straight away, what we're going to do is we're going to enter the form. So we're going to come into the form from the outside and start to articulate a sense of the structure around the brow, the nose and the mouth. All right, so one thing that you can see in Verrocchio's drawings is he just straight away works into the form and establishes where that eye socket is, okay, and where that eye socket is with these very loose marks, okay, and starts to build in a sense of the brow here and there, okay, and we remember always that when we are drawing eyes, okay, especially if we've got a face which is head on, eyes are eyes there are five measurements of the eye across the whole face okay and they're right in the middle as well obviously they're not right in the middle of our image because um the beard is elongating the beard is elongating the head so if the, the if the eyes are here then the, and the chin would be here because that's equidistant from the top of the head, okay? But also a touch of hair is probably el elongating the, the length of the head as well, all right? So straight away, what I've done is I've drawn the main structure of that, well, not the structure yet, but I've started to come into the structure with these very, very light impressions to give us, and that's already given a sense of depth because I've penetrated the form and um, drawn the eye sockets. So I, I'm not really focusing on the details or the superficial appearance of anything, I'm really focusing on the structure and the things that are most important to give me a sense of the 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 the, the, the face and its structure. Okay, so not copying anything. I'm still I'm well. I'm always and down to the nose. So we've got this structure here. Now we're going to use it, and we're going to sort of descend down to the nose, and we'll put a, maybe we'll put a very light circle. Okay, so we're not, well, not a generic circle, but a kind of form for where that base of the nose is here. Okay, and then we've got the edges of the nostrils. Okay, just very lightly draw those in. Okay, and then down the center of that, we'll find our way into the mouth. So we'll, these things that we've drawn, we haven't drawn them as separate things. We've drawn them all in a connected way. Okay, and we're just implying where they are in the form rather than actually drawing um, exactly how it looks on the surface so we're just being really light loose and you know at this stage everything can change because everybody's drawing so lightly so my outlines are probably going to end up further out than my initial shape but that's not a problem drawings can always develop and i think i was talking about that quite a bit yesterday okay in the live drawing class that we did, well, the live drawing class where I had my my satyr, okay? So things are always going to kind of change um, in the drawing process, and uh, we're just going to keep it really relaxed and really loose, 
and uh, be able to think that we're actually drawing a sculpture which had really big influence in the Renaissance as well, because this is a Roman copy of a, uh, a Greek original, okay? And um, the Romans actually mass-produced this sort of thing um, in the age of the empire, because it showed their, that they had some learning. It showed that they had a kind of connection to Greek antiquity, you know, because the Romans had a lot of legally, in, um, administratively, militarily, so... Um, there are lots of ways that the Greek, that the Romans wanted to show that they had some understanding of Greek culture and civilization. Um, and so this would have been quite a significant bit of thing in Roman times. But in the Renaissance, it was the rediscovery of these sculptures, especially by, you know, it was Nicola Pisano in the 13th century when he was um, really, really instrumental in the rejuvenation of the sculpture. So you can see here, very lightly, I've sketched in the whole thing. And just focusing on the real basics, I've got a sense of the action of the pose, and even though he's not really um, active, he's very passive, our model today, um, but he's still very important. And um, I've just kind of put in some key things very lightly and loosely, all right? And what we can do at this stage, this is really stage one, okay? Stage one in the drawing process. I've just laid in some of the main really loose ideas Okay, loose impressions of where things are within that form. So, so it's the position and inclination of the form that we focus on first. And um, what we can see if we, if we go back to Verrocchio's unfinished drawing, that well, I don't know if it's unfinished, he left it, he kind of abandoned it at some point, didn't he? You can see that in that drawing, there's a very kind of loose uh, overall shape of the head. And if you look really closely, which we won't be able to because the camera won't handle it, there are these very loose, light lines um, that he drew before these uh, more heavily rendered things, these more heavily rendered sort of details, like the eyelid, that sort of um, line above the eyelid. Okay, well, the eye, where, you know, before that little thing. Okay, so these are all quite hardly drawn, quite already. That's because he, that's the second and third and fourth stage of the the process but the first stage of the process looks much looser and um, it's very 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 kind of um, general and approximate and things always change and what we can look at now is some other old master drawings by Verrocchio as well if I can find my new Verrocchio book which my mum bought me for my birthday so we've got something totally incredible here so look in that drawing by Verrocchio very very early stage of, actually some people think that that's Leonardo but I really think that's Verrocchio a lot of modern scholars now think that that's a Leonardo drawing that unfinished baby okay but I'm really am qu quite convinced that's Verrocchio because there's so many consistencies with other unfinished drawings um which 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 I think has got the kind of character and sort of pace of drawing that is more similar with other Verrocchio drawings but um but yeah, there are so many similarities between this drawing and the other unfinished one. And I think we're going to try and use as much of that, that sort of um, those ideas as possible to kind of take our drawing further. OK, so this is a much earlier. This is an earlier stage than the other drawing we were looking at. Um, and, and you can see here he hasn't got any tone yet, but he's built up up a bit more certainty around certain contours and certain areas and l just notice again that the focus is really on the structure around the eyes the nose coming into the mouth and how they're connected and how they relate to one another and the outline on, on the top of the cranium is very very proximate okay this is not something that is drawn hard at the beginning it's something that is left really soft you develop the important areas of structure at the very beginning and that enables you to um to leave those less structurally vital parts for later and to draw them um, with the understanding that you've gained from drawing the more vital parts of the structure. Okay, I love this. I think that's so absolutely divine. And oh, there's just so many Verrocchio drawings. Yeah, you know, we're going to look at a few, I think. We've got time. And we're only doing one drawing this evening, so we've got plenty of time. I'll, I don't know what to do with that. I'll put the drawing down here. Okay. Uh, I go with my pencil. God, there's 12 people logged in now. Um, 
leave them some comments, everyone, if you feel like interacting or message me, whatever, I don't mind. Ah, Laszlo just commented on uh, my Instagram. I was there when you drew this. Yeah, Laszlo, you were. You were indeed, Laszlo. I hope you're watching now. You might be among the, the 12, are you? You know, I hope you are. You're in Hungary as well. It's so wonderful how we can have sort of like a real community and um, we can interact with one another um, throughout this uh, time, okay? Let's get a sip of water. Okay, so so if we look at the second stage of the drawing, we've got some slightly more um, definite marks being made and um, things are going to move slightly. And what you'll notice is that I don't rub out. I let all of the previous things stay. And we just build things up gradually and then start introducing tone quite early as well. Okay, so I hope you're all drawing. Outlines can wait. I'll push them out once I've built up a good bit of volume and more structure here, maybe give a few ideas about, um, maybe give some suggestions of the hair and stuff, but nothing hard at this, this point. I'm going to keep it really loose. I hope you could see. Okay, so now coming straight back into that brow. I'm so glad Laszlo commented. Okay, and I can already see, now that I've kind of done a bit more just now, I need to move that nose across a bit. Okay, so I'm already making an adjustment. One thing you see in old master drawings all the time is how many adjustments they make. Okay, and now just building a sense of that nose coming forward. Okay, and how that comes into the brow here. Okay, now we're going to work on the eye. Notice how I move around all the time. You never stick in one area. Um, you never kind of just linger in one area too long because what happens when you do that is um, one area of the drawing develops too far and you end up not being able to make um, reasonable adjustments as the drawing develops because what you'll notice is that as you draw, the longer you spend on the drawing and the more active you are on the drawing, um, you then realise that um, you need to move things around. So if you draw them hard your drawing can't adapt to the change to the developments in your understanding because don't forget that drawing you is really a process of developing an understanding of a form okay it's kind of like a, a it very is very much a dialogue um where you are um interacting with something in a physical way um okay it's like physical seeing okay so now we're just really starting to build up a sense of the form of that head okay i've made some changes to the nose okay i'm just gonna really just lightly make some suggestions here okay and then move down to the mouth again okay so everything's moved slightly what you notice when you look at old master drawings is that the early stages in the drawing and you know even at some um, in at more kind of uh, stages in the drawing where the drawing is already quite highly developed, um, you see um, changes being made, ideas, you know, him kind of changing the drafts man, the drafts man or the, the woman who's working away, drawing and analysing and 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 coming to a deeper understanding of what their their, their perspective on on the theme that they're engaging with. Um, the Michelangelo's drawings there are numerous versions of. Um, because he was kind of trying to figure things out. And when you do several drawings of what something, another thing that you realise is that the one that you're working on isn't actually that important. <laughs> and that's amazing because um, if you realise that the drawing that you're working on at any given time is probably the least important drawing that you're making, it really does liberate you from the, um, the anxiety of having to make something good. Maybe I'll do, you know, I'm probably going to do 10 drawings today or something like that. Then it's actually becomes, um, it becomes the case that the one that you're working on doesn't represent your potential, doesn't represent anything important about you. It's just one of many. And your overall ability is actually showcased over numerous drawings, which might be made over numerous years. And so the one that you're doing, you can afford to make mistakes, okay? There's no need for any perfectionism that's really damaging and um, we only want positive things to come from drawing we only want positive feelings to come from drawing and we only only really want positive 
affirmation and um, something enjoyable and pleasurable to come from this process. So um, perfectionism shouldn't really be in it, okay? <clears throat> okay, so now I've kind of, just like him, I've kind of followed the guidance that I've got from Verrocchio by just putting in a bit more uh, definition, some more closely observed rendering on the structure of the brow and that sort of thing, made some changes, all right? Uh, so I'm going to carry on with that for a little bit more before I start um, doing a touch of shading, okay? And I don't normally call it shading, sometimes I do, but what I call it, you do some hatching and then you smudge it and then you hatch over it. That is a really that is a really good technique, it's a really useful technique, um, but I don't really um, use it at the moment. It's getting hot, so I might take my jacket off. Don't worry, nothing else is coming off though. <laughs> okay, so... <clears throat> Got my pencil. Oh, there we are. Okay, so now I'm going to give a few more bits of definition. All right, and uh, just a few kind of uh, key, you know, indications of around the eyes. Okay, give a sense of that cheekbone. You know, and I like this image actually. I think they've done very well with this image. Um, that kind of uh, raking light, I think if it is raking light, it's uh, it's quite quite good. It's much better actually than when you draw in room twenty two where this um, particular statue um, sculpture is housed, because the lighting in there is dreadful. So when they're back open um, and we're able to go there, maybe we can all go into the British Museum into room twenty two and say, can you do something about the lighting, please? Um, but no, we probably won't because we're all very nice and we don't really complain. Um, okay, so now I've kind of done enough kind of, uh, of that kind of structural stuff for the time being and I'm going to start using tone, I'm going to start using hatching to um, really get into the form. And because I've left the uh, linear work, this linear analysis, of um, the head so far very light, I can do the shade, the, the hatching um, to the same level of um, darkness, to the same level of, um, uh, you know, sort of to the same, same level of tone as the lines, so that what we have is um, a kind of harmony, a harmony between line and tone, so that we can gradually build up our understanding of the the, the volumes and the and and everything. And I'm not just going to draw the shadows. You know, we've got a clear sense of shadow on the um, the proper left side of the the nose and under there. And we see some similarity here. You know, it's why it's good to look at old master drawings at the same time. Is that's where the shadows are on this Verrocchio drawing. You see, you can see the hatching along the side of the face. You can see the hatching on the inside of the eye socket, okay, and you can see the hatching along the nose and under the nose and around the mouth. So we're going to use those ideas. That's what we're, they're the ideas. And uh, this whole process is going to be one which integrates line and tone in a kind of, um, you know, in a kind of uh, harmony, okay. <laughs> All right, so coming back in here so I'm gonna make sure that we have a sense of see how we put in that Verrocchio drawing that, that tone coming on that side just very lightly lay in some hatching now okay that's how I do it just do it like um, like you're just you do it just softly and lightly just like that so you don't want to do it hard you don't want it to look like hair you don't want it to look like um, scratches you don't want it to look angry you want it to look really soft you mustn't look like you've gone uh, 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 uh. it's got to look like you've just kind of it's almost like you're just brushing the, f the form and you're, it's like you're it's almost like you're uncovering you're unveiling the form with the pencil it's like you're um, you're illuminating the form okay and you're doing that gradually and delicately um, and observationally okay so that's what hatching does okay and um, you can do it very lightly in in all in the same direction for, for now okay and you can just lay in a little bit of tone where you want to give a sense of depth okay so we're going to put some under the nose 
okay and it doesn't have to be exact it can still be approximate and it you know if you don't have to respect you don't your t hatching at this point doesn't have to stay within the borders of the lines because otherwise you're drawing from line to line and you're doing that that's completely not what Verrocchio was doing hatching is just very loose and you're analyzing the form with tone just like you analyze the form with line and the tone can't be restricted by the line okay you have these or they all have to kind of um, blend together all right cool we've got 14 14, 14 um, friends with us now Okay, so just very lightly building up some of the tone in this very kind of uh, loose, sketchy way. Don't forget, I'm just sketching. And um, this is what I would be doing on a normal Friday evening, either at the British Museum or the v &A, unless I was out for dinner with Leona, which is uh, just as good, if not better, because she's amazing. Okay, and then I would... Yeah. Or at the cinema. Um, and now just really lightly. Okay, so now you go just loose and lightly I'm doing this and it the hand my hand is so relaxed. Okay, and you don't want to push hard, you don't want to do anything that's going to disrupt the drawing. Okay, so all basically all in one direction now. I've just laid in some tone. Okay, just very lightly. Okay, and I'll maybe just do a little bit of very soft tone along that side of the beard there. So now I've brought it to that stage. Okay, I hope you think it looks a bit like Socrates. <laughs> um, don't forget, I'm, I'm multi cut tasking to a degree, not that I make any excuses. Um, and uh, yeah, so yeah, we, I'm keeping this very light and very gradual, um, but it's actually quite a quick process. It's not it's not a slow process. Okay. Oh, cool. It's like a it's like um, it's like being with. Uh, leave some comments, everyone, if you're here. It's like um, or message me. Um, it's like, um, you know, it's like being at a class. Okay. Right, you know, I'm looking at it at a funny angle as well, but that's fine. I'm just going to make do. Um, okay. So now I'm going to start using line and tone together. And I'm going to go straight back into that central and really important area the brow you know the because these areas really tell you about the skull the underlying structure of the head and the face so i'm going to really kind of go back into them and start to build up a clearer sense of them okay it's what you always see the masters do they always they are always closely paying very close attention to the most um important attributes okay of the the form let me know if you have any ideas about making this a bit better um, this is something that i've never done before i did my first video which i sent out on the mailing list on wednesday night yeah and um i've never had any kind of anticipation of uh doing anything on YouTube, <clears throat> the idea is terrifying, um, and it is odd, but I'm just glad that I'm with you lot doing it, and you're supportive, and that's yeah, amazing, and uh, this is in order for us to be able to cultivate really good, vital, and essential things and to retain a t togetherness and also I care very much about preserving the arts and enabling everyone to participate in them anybody who's who's um, you know wants to and uh, because if you want to that means you've got potential okay it's that's where potential begins it's in kind of passion so anybody who's got passion for it, I want to be able to uh, 
enable them to participate and encourage them to participate and share with them anything that is going to be useful and helpful to them because what that will do is it will strengthen the arts and make them a more of a positive, positive impact in the society. And if that happens, then we have a good link with our history, we have a good link with our heritage, and um, our heritage can play an active role in our lives. And I think that can really enrich and empower us that no matter what the social situations are at any time, because that is the most important thing about being alive. Okay, so and yeah, so here we are. So I've just developed that drawing up a little bit more now. I've just done a bit of tone and I've just laid in a bit more of a careful, you know, more sort of articulation around the structure of the brow and the nose and everything. Okay. So what time are we at? We've done 40 minutes already. But it does go quick, you know. It does go quick. Yeah. Okay. I remember, oh, I was really glad, um, Anthony, if you're watching, I am really glad to hear from Vivian today that you, um, that you uh, enjoyed yesterday, that you, that you tuned in yesterday to them via the messages and email um, since your last messages because I've been rather kind of um, <laughs> uh, frantically kind of setting my room up for um, this kind of thing and uh, made a few more changes today and uh, have had a few other things on as well. Um, but I like the commitment that I've got because, you know, the commitment to being, um, to presenting something important to a community that matters more than you can possibly imagine um, to me um, is a good motivation for me as well. So you're helping me by being a part of this and this is also that we can help each other. This is so bizarre, isn't it? This is absolutely bloody bizarre, but we're gonna forget that. Well, not forget it, but we're just gonna to be as oppressed by it in these times where uh, we're together and doing this, okay? It's kind of the point, really. <laughs> it's kind of the point. I hope this isn't cutting out so much for all of you. Yeah, well, I'm just really taking it easy and enjoying this, to be honest. I'm not even really worrying so much about technique anymore. Um, I'm just really just um, enjoying being with you. Um, and um, with all of you and um, drawing with you, really. So even if I go quiet. Yeah. So you notice how I'm kind of using line and tone together. It's there's no kind of um, there's no competition between them. It's not one then the other. It's kind of spontaneous. I'm reinforcing line and contour, and then um, laying in some hatching and sort of building the drawing up gradually and making adjustments. Okay, one maybe one thing that I can do at this point. Um, some technical useful stuff. Now that all of you at home who are drawing will have kind of got to a stage where you've got, you know, the, the main shape of the head and um, the structure of the, 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 the brow and everything in there. It makes them, I you know, you haven't seen me measure. One thing that you never, ever see me do is measure um, what the academicians do. You're never going to see me hold out my pencil and go like that um, because that is, um, for lack of a better word, nonsense okay that's nothing to do with traditional drawing in my opinion i know i'm quite opinionated but it's just awful to see people that because when they're doing that they're not drawing and they're not really looking they're not looking at the form at all they're looking at very particular things and they're looking at um how you know a distance okay don't look at distances and stuff on the thing that you're drawing what you can do is actually look at the drawing and measure the drawing. Now, you might want to kind of measure a little. No, 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 you're not. One thing you can do is measure. Well, not measure really, but judge. You're not really measuring, you're judging um, because the drawing isn't exact, it's approximate. You can actually judge um, the relationship between the eyes and uh, the top of the head 
and the eyes and the bottom of the, the head, so the chin and the top of the skull, okay? Okay, so the base of the mandible here, this point there, and the top of the skull there. So you basically want the tear ducts to be equidistant, especially if you've got this particular pose. If it's looking head on, you want those eyes um, to be in the center, okay, in the middle. So on my drawing, because I've got these so loosely, you know, there's quite a lot of give there. Um, it doesn't really um, matter so much at this stage. But one thing that does have real vital importance is the relationship between um, the top of the brow and the bottom of the nose and the bottom of the nose and the bottom of the chin. So see how they're the same? And also that's the same measurement for the um, top of the brow and the hairline, okay? So those three things are the same. The head is um, composed, or the face is composed of three equal measurements, all right? So you don't need to do that on the model. That's just a principle, that's just a principle of design um, which you can use in drawing any head, okay, any face, um, that there are three equal measurements. So the top of the brow, the top of the, no, the top of the brow, and then the hairline. Obviously, in the hairline here, it's receded. Mine's kind of proceeded, <laughs> um, but that's, uh, you know, that's what it is. And um, and the chin, so and the nose. So look, the brow to the the to the uh, to the hairline, but that's not really relevant here. But it's the kind of it's the kind of that bit on the forehead that uh, you want it to relate to, and then the base of the nose. So the so the top of the brow and the base of the nose is basically the same distance between um, the top of the brow, base of the nose, equal distance to the that part on the forehead. So I'm going to just indicate that with a little spiral or a little whatever, just as long as it's drawn lightly, okay? Because you don't want to draw the eye to it unless. Um, you're going, you know, unless you unless you do want to draw the other, okay? And then that's going to be equal as well. So that's that sort of measurement from the base of the nose to the top of the brow to the base of the chin, okay? So that's equal to the bottom of the nose and the base of the chin. And so that is basically where the base of um, Socrates' chin is, but that beard is kind of coming all the way down here, all right? So that's one way to really make this easier. It's just to have that knowledge, that principle in the mind, that bit of theory, okay, that's theory of drawing, um, theory of practice um, in your head when you're drawing so that you don't then have to kind of point and do all that sort of stuff that you see the academicians doing. Um, yeah, and it, I, that's just not how to draw, doing that sort of looking at that and then saying, oh yeah, that's, the, you know, and then doing this measuring thing. It's not organic, and um, it, it's it's not spontaneous, and it's disruptive and um, a cop out. You know, you've got to take risks. You're not searching for certainty. You know, mystery must always play an element in um, art, and it always did in the great arts, in the high art of the Renaissance. You know, there aren't. You're not. You're not copying. You're not copying exactly. You're 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 delving into your perspective in drawing, you're not copying anything, you're exploring and affirming of your vision, you're exploring your own deeply subjective vision, that's what you're do doing, and that can't be exact, you know, enjoy and explore the limits of your perception, don't try to copy things exactly, none of the great masters did, none of, no great mas master ever does that kind of academic stuff, it's wrong. <clears throat> okay all right and um yeah so i'm basically doing that kind of uh using that principle to judge my drawing okay and that's done observationally not um not with a with a you know measurement thing okay sorry if that kind of upsets anyone who really loves academic drawing but um i find it vile okay um Um, so, age, you can start to tune up a bit, okay? So it's on very a very low, quiet level at the moment. See, you know, it's all quite consistent, and the vol the tone is really giving me a, you know, it's really kind of integrated with the line, okay? And now we're going to start to reinforce and build things up gradually, okay? <clears throat> all right. 
So he's actually got a bit of a frown here. I don't know if that would have been the original intention, but this sculpture is, you know, over 2,000 years old. So uh, it may have been beaten in a bit. But um, what we can do is um, present it, not necessarily exactly how it looks, but we can soften that hard edge. See that hard edge above his left eye, his proper left eye. We don't want that in the drawing because that's too abrupt and that's going to look really not, um, it's not going to look very nice in the drawing, so we'll not do that. Okay, but what we'll do is just have that. Don't draw hard lines around the nose either. That's got to be soft because there is no edge. It's a kind of, it's kind of a, there's no hard edge here. It's all really soft. Okay, so you just be, there's a bit of darkness up here, but it's, 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 there's no real edges here. Okay, just a bit of tone under there and a bit of tone here and on the side of the nose. It's quite, quite, quite subtle. Okay, so very gently bringing the sense of the, edge of the nose into here and on the other side and around here okay and just um being a bit putting a bit more pressure at the tip of at that kind of see underneath the nose there there's that tip okay you want that to be separate from that you want to give a sense of see that bit where the nose comes into my philtrum you want the, the tip to be coming forward okay so one way to do that is to actually put a little bit of a harder mark at that point, okay, like what I've just done. So you see how that little dip, that little slightly harder thing there, that brings the nose forward ever so slightly, okay? And then you wanna leave that other bit soft and, and, and tone, more sort of like soft, with soft tone. Oh. Watching until 7.30, Si, that means size left the building. <clears throat> Okay. Okay, and then I've done that now a bit more tone, everyone. Okay, now the nostrils. Nostrils, somewhere where you can start to put a bit of hard lines, okay? But then they don't have to be so exact, okay? So just a bit of, um, just a, you don't have to actually copy the shape of the nostril, we just have to put some indications that they're there, okay? And they don't have to be kind of like exact or anything, but they're not right. Edge of the nose, yeah, the edge of the nose, you can just give something very, you know, very light, it's sort of a light edge, okay? Let me know, everyone, if you've got any ideas or suggestions or you want me to cover something else or if you want to show me your progress, if you want to message me your progress, you can WhatsApp me. I don't mind if you don't want to or if you just, you know, enjoying you know calming down and doing some drawing um theo and noah i hope you're both here and justina justina and theo you were here yesterday i managed to hear from noah today and noah is um no i i you know made sure he had the link and everything Okay, so I'm just kind of like building up a bit um, some of the kind of harder areas. But notice how I'm not drawing any line in a very hard way. All of these marks are made up of little kind of impressions that are very kind of loose and um, loosely handled and um, loosely handled and kind of short. I'm not made drawing any long, hard lines or edges i'm just and i'm not drawing a line in one single go i'm you know making lots of little impressions lots of little dashes and and um you know because at the end of the day we're just giving indications in this whole process you know we're just giving indications and we're not really laboring on anything okay I got a nice love heart from my senior house, I think on Instagram just now. I was really thinking of you guys at this time. Um, Mark and Anna and Maggie and uh, Christine and um, Julia. Shame that we haven't got Joe at my senior house anymore. He went on to different things. But you know, I've been working with you guys for a long time now and you're, you know, 
Well, I mean, that's life drawing at my senior house. That's the, the that's where everything began. And that's, I can't wait to get back. I can't wait. And it's going to be amazing. Oh, God, my back hurts sitting here like this. <sighs> and, yeah, so, you know, we're just making continuous changes to the drawing. We've got that big sort of, you know, that, you know, that when you do that, that line that comes away from the nose there, he's got quite a significant one, hasn't he? And put that in and then we're going to see how close the top of the nostril is to the uh, to the eyes okay so this experience is for you to really really interact with western art and culture so we and we are doing that on many levels at this moment we are interacting in a creative way, in a creative and life-enriching way, with Western art and culture, because here we have Socrates. Socrates is the real figure who transformed Western civilization with his um, rather kind of, ra really quite radical, uh, philosophical insights into um, the, the fundamental nature of what is real. You know, Socrates, with, along with, uh, well, Socrates having taught people like Xenophon and Antisthenes, and then also, of course, um, the philosopher who's probably one of the most influential writers in all of Western history, Plato. Um, he kind of uh, articulates it. Well, we 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 understand antiquity, artic, uh, so Socrates to have really articulated a, an understanding of reality as not being physical. Oh. Have we got some images? From Leona, that is, oh, Leo, you are making, you make every day nice for me. But today you're really, you are continuing to do so. That is amazing. I'm so happy that you've done that and sent that, sent that in already. Thank you, Leo. Yeah, so, yeah, no, that's fantastic. That is really, look at the hair as well. You've done, you've done way more than me. <laughs> Noah, Noah's here. Yes, this evening just keeps getting better and better. How's your drawing, Noah? Better be, you know. I'm going to give you my number so you can WhatsApp me. <coughs> WhatsApp me or whatever. Oh seven four. Better be drawing now. Okay. You missed yesterday's class because you didn't pay enough attention to the link. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm only joking. Um, oh, yeah, no, Leo, that is beautiful. And uh, I love the hair. I love the face. You've made him look younger. I want that drawing. I want that drawing. Okay. That's going to be up on. I want that drawing up on my wall. That is amazing. <laughs> Excellent. Look at the tone you've put. Even the, the tone that you've got there at the top of the head, it kind of pushes that back a bit as well. That's great. Hello, Roz. Roz, did you just draw that? Blimey, I better speed up. Roz, that is wonderful. I better crack on and do some, Do I better do a bit better than what I'm doing. Cool, you're putting, you both are putting me to shame. That's wonderful, Roz. Wonderful. <laughs> Brilliant. 
Brilliant. Okay. So hopefully I'll be receiving some drawings from from you, Noah, as well at some point. Okay. So I better crack on. That's mine, everyone. Nice little Socrates. Yeah. You can see where I'm focusing on, can't you? And Roz, I really liked because on your one, Roz, you really did put that thing in there and that really did lift the nose out. That's brilliant. Really brilliant. Oh, do you know what? This is wonderful. This is a really brilliant thing to do. Ah. And I hope the internet's working a bit better for you, Roz. Jonathan Bowen. Blimey, we... No, you're not serious. Can I really show people that? All right, so we've got John here. Yes, he's quite good, isn't he? That's Jonathan Bowen, everyone. He's on Instagram as a bunch of lines. Okay. I did take him in the Instagram post around this as well. Nice stuff, John. That's great. Lovely drawing, John. Oh, so yeah, I, mean, I would normally be, you know, drawing with you guys. But, um, and uh, well, would normally be drawing with you guys. I am drawing with you guys. That's madness, isn't it? That is so, so, so mad. But anyway, okay. Well, you know, so I'm still hatching away, okay, and just lightly drawing stuff in. And uh, now, time for some hair, perhaps. Now, hair is something I really, really, really hated um, because it's so difficult. I'm just going to really just be really light with it. Okay, now I'm going to start looking at some of the edges actually because I don't really have a clear, there's no, I don't have any kind of uh, much of a suggestion of where things end. You know, the, the borders, the boundaries, the external kind of boundaries of the form do matter really. And um, oh, I want to show you more old master stuff because it's better than mine. <laughs> Of course it is, but, um, and I love talking and showing people old master stuff as well, because it's just so amazing. And um, because we've got people, we've, quite, we've got quite a diverse world, and so we should see ways in which um, contemporary artists do stuff. Obviously, I'm going to really keep, you know, you know, my project is really about, is really a traditionalist one, one which is focused on, um, uh, reviving things that are long gone um, from you know from a kind of very historical perspective with historical values and principles um, as best as I to my to the best of my understanding I've got another ping there wonder who's done that maybe it's my mum I hope my mum's doing some drawing sitting down there watching it as well in the living room with why I've got her iPad. <laughs> Thanks for lending me the iPad, Mum. That was amazing. You know, got to be able to look at the image while I can monitor the screen. And uh, yeah, no, thank you for that. Okay, so at the stage I am at, I've just kind of laid in a little bit more stuff, okay? All right, so I've got some beard growing now. Um, <laughs> on 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 Socrates. <laughs> um, I think I've got to wait a few more years before I've um, got anything significant coming. Oh, Addy, is that Addy? Yes, it is Addy. Good to see you, Addy. Thank you very much for joining us. I'll see you next time, Roz. Can you send me your number on Instagram, John? I started a bit late, but I can send the drawing so far. Oh, good man, Noah. Addy, oh, um, B Y E Ross, thank you so much. Joining, okay, thanks for the picture, Addy. It is marvelous. Okay, here we are. Do you know what, Ad Addy? That is, that is really good. 
That is seriously good, Eddie. There you go. Look at that. Fantastic. That is so solid already. Blimey, you guys are so good. Okay, Noah. My num number is O seven four three five five six double nine six three. Okay. So nice. Is Justina here? Oh, no. <clears throat> Oi, and Jan. Ah, thinking of all of you, and I just want you all to be able to remain connected and everything. Hmm. <laughs> Oh gosh, quite a bit of step up now. Where's my pencil? Mm -hmm. All right, so where would I, what would I do now? Probably, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking. Hi. Here, so I have to be a bit firmer around the nose now. Really want to bring that out. All right, now Tone as well, working together. Danny, I hope you're still here with us. You are so special. Do you know what, when, do you know what, the one, the comments I get about your modelling, Danny. Oh, and Danny, I still haven't been to your class down in Stockwell. Everybody, Life Art Stockwell. Um, you know, it's on Wednesdays in Stockwell. And um, when it's back running at the um, Cavendish Arms, we're going to have to do a kind of thing, I think, to get together with um, Danny. Danny's been so amazing uh, as a model and as a you know a supporter of my Mycenae House, the life drawing class at Mycenae House with me. You know, this is you know this is about this is really kind of this is you know this we've just got to be as kind of supportive of each other and everything. You know. Danny has been so good for the project. You all have. Everyone that's here now is incredibly important. Everyone that's, you know, everyone that's ever kind of participated in this project is incredibly important. I can't wait to see you all again. It's going to be amazing. Can't wait. All right, I'm going to put a, I'm going to put a bit of shadow now along that side of the nose. All right, just with hatching, checking what Verrocchio did. I'm checking, still, you know, <laughs> to checking what Verrocchio did on the little thing. You can see there's some squiggles going there. Shall we look? Okay, let's look. So you can see some squiggles. You can see some squiggles here under the nose. Look how light his hatching is, and look how little he's had to do to achieve that. You know, that is just unbelievable, isn't it? That's why I love him so much. One of the reasons I love him so much. I just wish I could meet him. And, um, you know, it's like maybe we can, maybe we kind of can meet them because we can really understand something about how they understood the world through their drawings, you know. And if we analyse their drawings, we really understand how they saw, okay, and how they drew. And that's wonderful. There's nothing academic about that, you know. It's just so lovely, isn't it? All those subtleties, everything. Amazing. I spent a lot of time with the real thing as well. I spent a lot of time with the real actual drawing in the British Museum and the Prince and Drawing Study Room. And they are so wonderful in there, you know, the the the, the people who run the Prince and Drawing Study Room. You've got there, um, you've got Enrico and Christopher, and it was uh, I can't remember, was it Julia, the lady who I think her name no Angela. There was a lady called Angela who run the, the who was like the supervisor who was um, uh, yeah really cool and uh, there were two Angelas actually one was the admin and one was the the supervisor 
And uh, yeah, no, they were great. So one day we'll go back. We'll go. We'll go to the print and drawing study room together. We'll book a. We'll book a slot in, and we'll um. We'll have to all kind of just go there and spend some time looking at old masters together. I'll have to organise something. Unbelievable, staggering potential. Just like all of you. Just like all of you have. Um, Theo as well. Justina. Amazing. You're going to go on to such amazing things in your artistic careers, all of you. Justina with her music, Theo with his painting, um, Noah with um, sculpture and painting and drawing and, you know, all the rest of it, really. Okay, I'm going to make up some of the beard now, the moustache. I'm going to start drawing. I'm just going to really start drawing in some um, hair in that kind of moustache okay, and I want it to look consistent Anthony if you're um, if you're here you're I'm so happy you are and um, if you've got Vivian with you as well that's amazing okay so now I'm just really lightly drawing in some some hair Coben, Coben, if you're watching, if you've got the video on, nice talking to you earlier. Hope you're uh, having a nice time indoors. And you hope you're doing a bit of drawing as well, but you're probably not. <laughs> okay. God, I had a bit of a panic earlier because um, I was trying to log on to go live and um, I, because I'm not really that good with computers and that sort of thing, I'm, you know, this is like my, you know, I haven't really done this um, very much at all. Um, I just, you know, uh, I thought it wasn't going to let me go live and I'd made that kind of pledge to, to do so. And so here's mine so far, my little Socrates just working away. Who's this? Noah. Come on, man. Let's have a look. You guys might want to follow Noah if you're on Instagram. He's on his uh, at depictions of Noah. I like it. But you've got a pretty long line coming down the middle of his head there. I like it. I like the that you've built up the you know the the internal stuff first and the outlines are very loose that's good but you've still got that general you've still got that kind of very you've really established the main form there um yeah excellent Noah that's great and that volume around the nose is good yeah one th you do sometimes see that line you do see that line coming through old master drawings quite a lot but as you can see I haven't done that because I've been paying such close attention to the structure that they kind of all line up. Or, you know, and I'm not worried about it being exact either. One, you know, you do see the line coming down the middle in this drawing. Okay, so in that highly finished Barocchio drawing, you do have that line coming down. Okay, you do have the drawing more so than anything else because in the earlier stage of the drawing, there's no trace of a line there coming down the middle. Okay, that's not the sort of thing you actually have to do first. Everyone thinks it is. Everyone thinks that you do that line down the middle first, um, just to keep them. But it doesn't actually. It doesn't actually help. You do see it in some sort of very quick drawings where they just. Uh, yeah. Danny, you can no longer see halfway through. Our connection was so bad. Oh, Danny, I'm sorry. I hope you can um, see now. How long have we been on? An hour and ten minutes. I can't believe it. Oh, I've normally done more drawing. Mary Winchester. I must reply. Who else? I've got more messages now. Who's been messaged? Danny. Oh, Danny. You are amazing. Danny Mariano. Astonishing.
Okay, who else? Maybe that's it actually. Was I getting overexcited? Okay. Oh, thank you, Mary. So. So, hopefully, <clears throat> perhaps. Um, cool, I love this book. Yeah, so we've got this head, one of the Queen's ones. Amazing, actually. Yeah, no, so she's got this at Windsor Castle. Our queen. Okay, you can see that he does have a... Yeah, no, it's not... Yeah, no, there isn't, actually. He's highly finished. Yeah, no, there is, there is a line coming down here, probably where he started off with a sense of the centre of the skull, but he hasn't used it coming all the way down. Um, but in some, And in that um, in that one, they're down the middle now, you've, you've kind of imprisoned yourself, and that's... Um, yeah, you want to avoid that, really. Um, you don't want to put anything, any limitations, you know, that limits your that limits your freedom if you do that. Um, one thing that Michelangelo did often do was the line coming across just to suggest where the structure is around here. Um, but that could always change. And Pontormo used to do that as well. You can see in this drawing, some of the earlier marks in this Michelangelo drawing. Here you can see that the head is up here first, and then, you know, you can see lines coming across where the brow and then the eye sockets have actually moved down. So it's like if you commit to this kind of linear thing, it's not actually um, going to allow the drawing to develop the way that you it otherwise would if you had that freedom from that line. You use that line once you've established the structure just to see how things are lining up and then to make some adjustments. It's not something you want to commit to at the beginning, although it's very popular. It's very, 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 uh, it's taught in kind of, I don't know, some schools and stuff like that. And it's uh, something that people often start with in realism when people are doing realism, but not so. it's not so useful if you're um, committed to more traditionalist naturalism. So naturalism from from you know people like um, from the time of uh, Nicola Pisano and Cimabue up to um, up until well I mean to the high point in in the naturalism of people like Donatello and Verrocchio and um, the the preceding generations um, people like Ghirlandaio and um, Perugino and that sort of thing. <coughs> Well, I think that's probably enough of the uh, old master drawings. I'll probably just carry on with the work. Okay, numbers are plummeting, so I guess that was really a boring uh, section. Okay. Good stuff. I love that number, though. That, that's really good work. Okay. So yeah, yeah. I might put a line down there now. Actually, now that I've seen Noah do it, <laughs> now that I've told him off for doing it, I'm going to do it now. Okay, so I'll just give a really light, straight kind of line there, just to see how these forms line up. And I'm not coming through the whole thing. I'm just where they matter and connecting the the the, uh, the features. Okay. Then I want that brow to come forward. John, how, John Bowen, how are you getting on? Are you all right? Um, I wasn't able to, I, well, I was kind of in a bit of a panic before I started the video, so I didn't get to call David, but if you get him on the phone, I don't know, it might be easier for you. Um, if not, I'll give him a, I might give him a call later on. Um, yeah, so I'm just being really kind of uh, quite light with the drawing. So nice, so I'm really grateful that um, those of you who are watching are watching. That's really kind of uh, really uh, good for me to know. Okay. 
Okay, now I'm probably getting a bit fixated on the eyes now. It's important to move around all the time. Okay. Leo, how are you getting on? I'm just really lightly drawing in the hair. Now I'm just you know just putting in some hatching. So here you, here's where I'm at so far. It looks very wrong when I look at it in the screen. It looks like this. That's um. Yeah, I've got way too wide on the side here, and uh, probably wide on that side as well. So I'm gonna have to bring that in somewhat. You see what I'm doing? Yeah. And then if I look at that edge in the eye, that hair is just here, and that will just be there. So that's going to come in. Quite a bit as well. Okay, so I've just made that adjustment there because I've just noticed that that's far too way out. He's on my way now. <clears throat> now I'm going to start making some kind of clearer and more kind of uh, harder edges now. Time to bring the drawing up to up to the same standard as all of yours. You know, if I can, you bu amazing bunch. You want to draw the hair as though it's hair. You want to kind of, you almost want to tell a bit of a, you want to kind of uh, give the suggestion that even though the hair is marbled, it is rendered in marble, you do want to give the impression of hair still. Okay, you're not copying marble. You kind of want to still render hair. So um, you want to keep that nice and light and don't worry so much about drawing clear distinctions between the hair and the and the, the actual form, the actual head, because if you do, it will look too hard. And hair is very soft, so then you've got to be really soft with hair. Oh, it's such a nice thing to have um, so many of you come come and pop by. Never had 14 people drawing at the British Museum with me before. It's always been sort of like a hand, just a handful of you. But if you can think of uh, anyone who's going to benefit from this, then, um, you know, this is the first one that I've actually made um, accessible to anyone, even without the, 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 the link I've done, because I'm so kind of, well, I would never had a plan of, to do this before. I had just set it so that you, if you send, if I sent you the link, you could access the video. This is the first one I've done where anybody searching for it can find it without having been provided with the link. Um, I'm going to keep the Wednesday and Thursday classes 
um, at the usual time, um, the way where you kind of have to have the link, I think, at this point, because it has to kind of retain the same, the same, it has to be consistent as possible with our classes. Um, but obviously, like, I'll prov I will provide the link to somebody who I think will kind of benefit from coming because the classes are open, aren't they? And we always welcome whoever comes through those doors, no matter whether they've drawn before, or no matter if they've, you know, with, the doors are always open in this project and we are always welcoming to anybody because everybody who has an interest has got a potential and the project is here to really bring that potential out and to make it excel. Okay, so like anybody who, um, you know, anybody who kind of you think might want to take part in anything, send them the link or, you know, ask their, you know, but, you know, whatever, you know, the doors have got to stay open. And there might be somebody who could really kind of, who might really enjoy it and, you know, this might be really helpful to them. Um, you might end you know, the community can grow and then, you know, people in this period might make new friends. You know, I want, I want to be able to really in, keep interacting because I can't, I can't not share this. I can't just, I can't stop sharing this. Now that I've got used to sharing this with all of you, there's no way I'm going to let that stop. Working on building up that Socrates, my hatching and line. It's all lines and hatching. It's all this is. It's just lines and hatching. Cool, I've got 11 people. Quite a busy class, actually. 11 people watching. Not all of you can comment, I know, but if you want to WhatsApp me, feel free. If you want to draw, I'm going to go and get some more old masters, I think. Some. Oh, back to that exit, like that. Got this amazing book here by Carmen Bambach, who's the um, curator of prints and drawings at the Metropolitan Museum in New York. She re recently published a new one by Mike um, about Leonardo, one that she spent decades on, um, and it's a monumental work. She's also published um, Michelangelo, Divine Draftsman and Painter, um, to go alongside the um, exhibition that she had at the Metropolitan a few years ago, which I didn't get to go to, obviously, because New York's quite far away and you need to have quite a bit of, uh, you know, quite a bit of expandable income to go, which wasn't really happening. But, um, yeah, you can see here as well in the pen, that pen drawing, my client Leonardo hasn't drawn a kind of line coming through that. That looks just like something he did. And that's the actual size as well, amazing. Yeah, and in... Uh, that was more of a kind of profile where we wouldn't have needed it. Um, oh, there's just so many good drawings by him. Oh, we've got Verrocchio again. Yeah, so this is actually a Verrocchio sheet in Edinburgh. Um, and you can see on a couple of these heads, there are lines coming down the middle. Um, and then others there isn't. So it's, yeah, no, I don't think that it's, I think you draw the shape of the head first, you plot in some of the main things and then you put that line down if you want to. It's not, um, the, you know, the first or second or third thing you do. And in none of these is there that line coming down the middle of the head in those little um, drawings by Verrocchio, the children. Oh, 
Unbelievable. Yeah, so how are we all doing then? Are you all doing okay? Let me know if you need any su suggestions or help. Don't forget, we've got live drawing on Wednesday and Thursday. I haven't worked out who the or who or what the model is going to be yet. You know. If we can find a way to get some models involved and be on it, being able to support them for their uh, in return of their work, that would be good. But I don't know about how we're going to do that yet. But that would be a wonderful thing. Maybe, uh, maybe on Zoom or something like that. Oh, for rock, yeah, just overwhelming. You know, she's amazing, Carmen Van Bogue, because she actually really analyzes the technique as well. She's her writing's amazing. I'd recommend you buy one of her books if you can order one or something like that. She's very good at the materials. That's the actual size as well of that Christ head there by Leonardo. Tiny drawing, see how kind of uh, homogenous the tone and line is. There are no abrupt sort of things. Slightly harder edges, slightly darker around the brow and the mouth. And that very kind of the one hardest edge there, the hardest edge is there, just there at the mandible, just to give a sense of the tension that he's doing that. See there, that, that was the one hard edge in the whole drawing at the mandible, to give a sense of the action, to enhance a sense of the movement in the body. Line is amazing. Line can actually give you an under, you know, you wouldn't notice that just by looking at the drawing. You'd have to really kind of spend time with the drawing to kind of notice that. But that's how the drawing works. That's how the drawing has its effect. You see. So I suppose I do have a bit of a line coming down the centre now. Don't feel obliged to stay if you've done enough. You might want to go to bed or go and have dinner or something. So no one's obliged to stay. This is just a kind of uh, this uh, an offering, really. Uh, 
fact that you're tuning in and commenting and everything really is encouraging. Well, thank you all so much, Addy and uh, Leona and uh, Roz, everyone for sending in your drawings. This is getting a bit uncomfortable sitting here like this. I'm going to soldier on there. Okay, so I'm being really kind of just suggestive and not really, I'm not worried about having a kind of finished drawing by the end of this. I'm just literally, I'm just literally using this process of drawing allow me to kind of find my way around this form. And I'm keeping the drawing very loose. Putting a few indications of a, you know, a few slightly harder indications just to give a sense of where borders really are, where there is a boundary between the form and the space. Okay. Make sure that the hardest lines are actually inside the form rather than outside, otherwise you kind of diminish the sense of volume. So that's where I'm at at the moment in, in what I'm doing. You know, that face on Socrates using lessons from Verrocchio to the, as much as much as I possibly can. What time are we at now? Cool, we've just got 20 minutes left. We haven't had a break at all, have we? We've just been going straight through for an hour and a half, or an hour and 40 minutes. Cool, this is a learning experience for me, you know, like, um, you know, as we go on, I'll get better at doing this. Um, and, uh, you know, We'll make it better and better. We'll do another one on Wednesday for the live drawing class. Hey, we're getting on. Very weird drawing from a photo as well. Don't just really don't. I always draw from life or from the actual sculpture itself. But you know, it's not like we can. I can just. Uh, it's not like the British Museum are going to lend it to me. And I hope Socrates' head in the British Museum is very safely tucked away in room twenty-two. So I'm building up quite a lot of hatching now, while still adding to the, adding and reinforcing the edges and lines, and being quite loose with everything.
I hope the quality uh, of the video has been okay. And that's um, things that kind of, uh, you know, the disrupt the tech, the disruptions haven't been as much of a problem. You'll have to let me know. Anthea, Anthea, how are you getting on? Are you okay? Hope Jeff's keeping well. So nice of Laszlo to drop me a message because he was actually with me when I did that drawing in the sketchbook. After that point, didn't really draw that much in the British Museum after that. We started drawing elsewhere regularly. Um, but still, the British Museum is just, um, oh God, amazing. Every time you go there, you're just overwhelmed with how just astonishing it is at the British Museum. Okay. That's my Socrates here. Leonardo da Vinci, Master Draftsman, now out of print. Blimey, that's, that's terrible. How could they be, have that book out of print? I better look after it then. Um, there should be massive demand for that book. It's amazing. And it was, uh, I bought that at the National Gallery last year sometime. I was very fortunate, obviously. So here, here's where I'm at, just with the little bit of it. Oh, my mum's just messaged me saying, great, beautiful John, lovely class. That's nice. Okay. Thank you very much, Mum. Oh. Out of this. <coughs> I can get an online version of it. Oh, that's okay. Not as good as having the printed images. Great, nonetheless. Oh, so nice that uh, Mary Winchester can comment and everything. What you were going to do after this then, just uh, relax and uh, have something to eat or something. You know, you're just going to carry on drawing, exploring more of the collection. That would be good. That would be great. <laughs> yeah, it's nice having the printed images to look at. And I just love, um, I just think the books are great to have. You know, it's lovely to have um, 
printed images is another thing. I just love books. So this has been my sketch. I might spend a bit of time on it, might do some more to it after the session and um, post an image up. Oh, just made a mistake. Okay, there we go, that's how far I've got with my drawing. Very sketchy. You guys let me know what you think. And uh, yeah, I hope you've got on well with your Amphia. In oh. oh, Anthea, that's a great idea. So Anthea said, uh, Anthea said she likes my drawing. Thank you very much, Anthea. An exhibition of everyone's drawings when this grim time is over. Yes, of course, we're going to have to. Yeah, of course, to bring everyone together in person to, you know, show some drawings that we've made. That's a great idea, Anthea. I love that. I love that idea. That's fantastic. Wonder how it will look in charcoal. Yeah, yesterday my life drawings were in charcoal, but I've done this one just in 4B. I might, I might do a bit more to it over the, you know, over the, um, over the rest of the. Uh, I might do a bit more tonight. I might do something else, or I might uh, do a bit more to it tomorrow. Thank you. And um, yeah. I hope you've all been enjoying this and I hope some of the kind of historical things I've spoken about have been interesting because it all plays a pretty important part. It allows, allows you to really um, incorporate the past into what you're doing. Um, so I'm one of these people that thinks the past is really, really, really important <laughs> and um, that the past is what makes us and it's the past that makes the future yeah it's the you know the past is uh, really fundamental oh well i've had a great time i don't know if i can um 
draw anymore. Good drawing, John. I think I'm about done with mine. Thanks for the session, mate. Oh, that's great. Let's have a look at yours then, John. Blimey, so John's added some nice white heightening to his now. You can see he's really brought out the form and he's used uh, that toned paper to his advantage and used that white chalk to build that up. And he's really got a really amazing dark sense of the uh, the form there. That's really great, isn't it? Nice one, John. Thank you very much for sending that in. That's brilliant. And you're welcome for the session. That's an absolute pleasure. Yeah, no, very good. Just like being at the British Museum. Ah. really great looking at that, um, all of your work. You've all done something unique, you've all done something true to your own style, you know. You've all kind of been considering these old-fashioned ways of doing it as well. Jonathan says, never drawn him on this on his own before. Love the hug nose. Love the pug nose and the guinea pig mouth. Very true, John. And Addy, you've done a lot more to your drawing there. That's fantastic. Very nice, Addy. Fantastic. Really solid head there. Excellent. And great life drawing from yesterday as well. Now another look at Jonathan Bowens. Look how solid and three-dimensional that is with that white heightening on that toned page there. Really good. Really nice bit of reflective shadow there. It's really got a solid... Really like looking at a solid chunk. So we've just got over five minutes left now. Hope you've all had a really nice session. Okay, so that's where I'm at at the moment with my Socrates. Hope you all have had a really good time over the last couple of hours doing some drawing. It's been lovely uh, 
talking to you about the history and there's uh, we're obviously going to be able to do more and you can all contact me on the mailing list if you want anything more specific at all okay and um yeah we can look at drawings we can discuss the development of western art we can think about how western art and culture um has developed over you know thousands of years and how um how ideas have permeated the Western consciousness from from India and um, to a degree from China as well, um, informing this uh, culture that we have and that we're a part of. And um, we'll think about how, uh, we'll think mostly about drawing, obviously, <laughs> and uh, we'll hopefully be able to interact with our models. Um, some of the life models have been contacting me I really hope that we're going to be able to kind of interact with them as well, just like normal on um, Thursdays and Wednesdays. Um, we have to find a way of making it, um, making it um, beneficial for them and um, maybe doing this on a different format like uh, Zoom or um, Google Hangouts or that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, we'll see. So um, I think we'll uh, draw things to a close now. If anybody wants to contact me, then you know most of you are, all of you have my email and uh, WhatsApp now as well. So um, yeah, I think I'm going to kind of uh, take a break and um, yeah, let the uh, art continue soon. Okay, everybody, thank you very much for participating tonight. Just wanted to make sure that that was open to all of you. And, um, you know, just so that you all know that we can carry on accessing art online. We can um, explore the National Gallery, the British Museum, the VNA. Now, all these resources are online and we can carry on as a group and as a community. And uh, yes, Addy. Um, and oh, yes, happy days. Who is that, happy days? That must be somebody very special to the class because uh, they're taking part. Um, most certainly see you on Wednesday. Um, I'm going to outline in an e the next email you'll get from me will be on Monday. And because um, uh, that's when I normally send out emails, obviously sent out a few more recently because more things have been happening. But my next email will be on Monday on the usual time and uh, I'll let you know what we'll be doing throughout the week. Oh Noah, good, good. I'm glad, really glad you're gonna be there on Wednesday. You might um might be able to interact with Jan, with Jan Kushonovic, who's uh, the artist who had some of the wonderful drawings in the exhibition. Bloody hell Noah, that's amazing. Fantastic. That's brilliant. First time drawing at the British Museum with me. Yeah, wonderful. Excellent, and I'm really glad you had a good time on the session. Really, that's great. Thank you so much, Noah. Thank you very much. So, so, so much. And so, yeah. Um, yeah, so Wednesday's class will be on as normal. So all Thursdays, um, I'll either be live streaming it on here again, um, or if I've got something else set up, I'll be doing a more more interactive and hopefully less distorted or you know a better way of doing it. You've some of you have sent me suggestions already. I've had a lot of um, a lot of responses on the emails and messaging throughout you know last night and um, since the class yesterday and during the class yesterday and uh, and this evening as well. So thank you all so much for that. And um, it's really important that I'm able to do whatever I can to connect with you all and to make sure that you're able to stay stimulated with the arts and that we remain a really, really close community of people that have shared principles and ideas and values and um, that we remain welcoming and opening to other people and that we ensure that anything positive that comes with this um, can benefit who might anyone who might um who might uh, benefit from it okay so um there we are we are thank you so much all of you for joining me at the british museum tonight isn't that wonderful 
Um, and uh, yeah, love to you all. And uh, wish you all the best for the rest of the evening. And I will see you soon. Take care. Bon nuit.